Morning. Uh, next question is from Barb. Yeah, it was one more punch for you on your frequent Dr. Ben card. Yeah, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, this is the response I get to Dr. Ben's video about how the virus could not be manufactured in a lab. Um, yeah, so it's a friend's post who's very skeptical of vaccines. All right, and I don't know, the friend may or may not have a science background, but usually it tends to be not but you can't really assume anything so let us read on yeah with great sadness let's see it doesn't necessarily believe this virus is from a lab okay but um he won't even now say it isn't for sure which yeah i mean these are things that are invisible to the naked eye you can see them with electron microscopes and you can detect their presence by their RNA and you can detect their presence uh, by the disease they cause. Yeah. So these are things that are unknown for a while and then boom, all of a sudden they become known and there's no way to rewind time and figure out exactly how, how the first one gets started. You can infer, you can do a pretty good job inferring, but um, yeah, there's no, um, there's no absolute way to know anything that happened in the past. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you believe that your parents are your parents and that, uh, you know, your name is your name, but you were too young at the time, yeah, to actually, you know, critically evaluate whether either of those two things were true. Um, and so, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think all of us are living a lie, but you know, <laughs> at the same time, it's not verifiable, but it's also not particularly a useful exercise. I don't know where it gets us. Um, it's just, yeah, endless speculation that doesn't really go anywhere. Anyway, back to this thing. Okay. Found a number of articles and submitted papers supporting that the gain of function research was being conducted. There have been experiments in the past that have been called, usually after the fact, gain of function, um, which is where they try something usually in the name of doing something else. Usually they are trying to um, figure out how a virus works or turn a virus into a thing that can be used as a vaccine. And um, yeah, uh, occasionally uh, they end up making something that uh, yeah looks like is somehow worse than the original virus. I mean, the the one case that I know of is um, let's see, vaccinia and ectromelia, which are similar viruses. Uh, and if you put a certain gene in them, that actually is really good at promoting an antibody response. At the same time, it can make those viruses more severe in mice. Uh, than they would be otherwise um, because the mice aren't relying on their antibody capacity, they're relying on something else. There's too long an explanation for that, but it was like an unintentional gain of function thing. Um, same thing when people passaged uh, flu viruses in uh, ferrets. Um, they found that the viruses that came out were able to infect uh, in two different parts of the lung. Whereas normally the virus is either limited to top half of the lung or bottom half of the lung in rough terms. It's actually a different version of the receptor. But once again, that's a virology lecture that we don't need right now. We got stuff to do. <laughs> um, so things like that have happened. They get labeled as that. Um, people talk about it. People try to figure out. A lot of times publications about this are delayed for a long time, which, I mean, this is a science ethics question and kind of a morality and society question like what do you do if you have information that has both the potential for good and the potential for bad do you just sit on it and pretend it never happened do you put it out in some kind of responsible way knowing that irresponsible people may pick it up what do you do how do you start this conversation who do you tell because as soon as you you tell somebody then you know <laughs> yeah the secret's out <laughs> Um, and a lot of these things are paid for by federal grants where you're kind of obligated to say what you've been doing with your grants. And you can't just say, uh, yeah, we found something that's really cool, but I, I'm not going to show you ever. Yeah, I'm not going to publish. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could try it. Yeah, it's just it's not going to end well. <laughs> 
So that's that's the only gain of function experiments that I know of. Um, there are rumors uh, in on the internet and books that people have tried modifying more dangerous viruses in secret government labs. I haven't ever talked to anybody with firsthand knowledge of any of that. So all I can say is I don't know. You know, somebody could have done something somewhere. I have no idea, but I don't believe that there is any meaningful way to actually do this and have the intended effect. So people outside of science tend to think that science can do anything, which is really cool. And honestly, that's that's very nice. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> it's like thinking Tom Brady can do anything when he goes out there on the field. That's, yeah. I don't know. This is, it's almost like fandom. Yeah. It's also not true. Yeah. <laughs> he loses the odd Super Bowl, and uh, scientists have a lot of experiments that do not pan out. The thing is, if you were to actually sit down and think about the logistics of how would you even try to do this, there is not a good cut and dried way to do it. A lot of viruses are very limited in the amount of size, or they have to have exactly a certain number of nucleotides in there. And if you mess with any of that, then the virus is dead. It doesn't, And so you can't just add a gene in and hope that this gene is going to make it uh, different. And the other giant reason why I think gain of function is uh, probably not a thing that yeah, can reasonably happen in the world is that you're always starting with something that exists. So let's say you start with SARS coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> and you plug something else into it. The thing is, this virus, this new virus you're putting out, has to compete in the world. It has to compete for hosts with the old virus. And viruses don't know that they should just, you know, stand aside and let the other virus go through and infect the lung. Viruses compete really hard and drive each other to extinction routinely, very rapidly, like alarmingly rapidly. Um, that's what happened to the, uh, the old H1N1. Uh, it just got driven out of existence when uh, the new, what they call the swine H1N1 came around, uh, pandemic 09. That is just what happens. And so you have to find, you would have to find some way to make a virus both more competitive with its fellow viruses by doing something that its fellow viruses don't do, which is weird. And also you'd have to make it hurt the host much more than the regular virus would, but you'd still have to make it spread really well or else you're hitting the virus's fitness. And it can't, uh, you know, if it, if it kills a person really quickly because it's really severe, then it's not going to spread very widely and it's going to be contained and just disappear. So, I mean, you, there's a lot more things you can think through, but there isn't a good way to do this that I've ever heard articulated or come up with myself. And uh, yeah, so that's that's why I'm not worried about it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you can say to uh, your friend or colleague, uh, whoever this is. But um, yeah, just that. I don't know. The, the cure is probably in learning more molecular biology and going and trying it like um, doing a laboratory molecular biology masters. And just get in there and try it with your own hand. Not don't try gain of function. Yeah, you, you crazy person. <laughs> yeah. But try to work with DNA. Try to manipulate it. Try to just add a stupid little chunk of uh, DNA into another chunk. And yeah, the weeks and weeks of misery that <laughs> come along with that. Uh, just like the simplest little thing. I think are better for convincing probably than any words could be. So it's the sort of thing that, uh, yeah, once you've tried it or got any firsthand experience, I think this whole idea just becomes something that uh, is not really, yeah, not really realistic at all. Thanks very much. This is Ask Dr. Ben.